Thanks for joining me as we get a drug picture of paracetamol, or in the United States, acetaminophen. Paracetamol, or acetaminophen, is a medication that's used to treat pain and fever. Paracetamol, or acetaminophen, is not classified as a anti-inflammatory agent. It's classified as a mild analgesic. Paracetamol was discovered in 1877, and after all this time, we still don't know how it works. We had thought that it was a enzymatic inhibition of cyclooxygenase 3, and that it worked centrally only, but recent studies have cast a lot of doubt on it working on any enzymes. So unfortunately, we're not going to get a real clear picture of how it works, but we'll still get a good picture of what it does. We can say with near certainty that acetaminophen or paracetamol does not work in the periphery like the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Recall how we have three what we term orders of neurons in the pain pathway. So the first order of neurons is going to go in the extremities up into the spinal cord. The second order of neurons goes from the spinal cord to the thalamus. And the third order of neurons travels, uh, takes that message over to the brain. And there it's going to be interpreted. We also have an inhibitory pathway, which goes from the brain down to the level of the spinal cord and whatever point that that first and second order of neurons met, that point is a gate, basically a gate. And at that gate, we have the ability to put some inhibition or inhibitory uh, postsynaptic potentials in that area. And we think that acetaminophen or paracetamol actually works around that area. At least that's where most of the research is being done on acetaminophen at this point. Paracetamol is said to be useful for the relief of mild to moderate pain. But like all analgesics, the efficacy of paracetamol is variable, not only between different conditions, but also between different individuals. So for instance, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, including aspirin and ibuprofen, are thought to be generally a lot better at relieving pain that involves inflammation. For instance, pain from rheumatoid arthritis. And then some individuals will receive pain relief from a condition, for instance, osteoarthritis with the paracetamol or acetaminophen, and then others will not. So it's important to switch to a different analgesic if there is no pain relief. Paracetamol is also regarded as an antipyrogenic agent, or in other words, it's said to decrease fever. One of the most important adverse effects of paracetamol is liver damage. Paracetamol toxicity is the foremost cause of acute liver failure in the Western world. It's caused by a number of different things. First of all, uh, paracetamol is oftentimes in uh, medications with opioids and somebody wants to like overdo the opioids, they actually get liver toxicity doing that. Another possibility is that somebody is not realizing that they're taking paracetamol in several different cold and flu remedies that they're taking simultaneously. And another possibility is that they don't metabolize the paracetamol very well. So for instance, the half-life of paracetamol or acetaminophen is anywhere between one and four hours, depending on the individual. So someone who metabolizes the drug very slowly is going to be at greater risk of hepatic damage. And now you understand that paracetamol, also known as acetaminophen in the United States, is a medication that's used to treat pain and fever. Paracetamol is used for the relief of mild to moderate pain, 
but one must remember that no analgesic is going to be effective in all people and no analgesic is going to be effective for all conditions. So the smallest dose for the shortest period of time is most appropriate. While paracetamol or acetaminophen does not harm the GIT or the kidneys to the same degree as the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and it doesn't affect platelet aggregation in the same way that the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs do, it's important to remember that it is toxic to the liver and it can cause serious liver damage if more than the recommended dose is used. And now you know. Thanks for joining me.